Hello everybody and it is Wednesday <laughs> and I have a dog in my face. She wants to say hi. Say hi peps. Say hi everybody. She thinks I'm talking to her. She's wondering why I'm holding her up. She has been all over me today so I thought I would show you guys. I was a couple minutes late today. Well maybe a minute late because she's being super high maintenance. So I just thought I'd show you guys. Hopefully she won't start crying again during our during our Facebook Live today, because I've got some fun new things to show you. Well, one fun thing, the new um, cut and emboss. All right, you ready to say goodbye? She's looking out the window, she's gonna start barking. All right, say bye, peps. Okay, go. All right, you guys always ask about her, so I thought I would show you. She's a big girl now. Yes, you're a big girl. I think she's reached her maximum size, maybe. She's pretty little. I think she's about maybe 14 pounds. Okay, so guess what arrived? The baby, the other baby. Isn't it cute? Not as cute as Pepper, no, but cute. Cute nonetheless. All right, so I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna flip you guys down in a minute, but let me make sure I'm in the right place. Um, let's see, I put her big brothers in their kennel because they're, they're old and grouchy. And, <laughs> and she, yesterday she cried when I did that, so hopefully today she's not gonna cry. <sighs> Okay, we are in the right place. Hello, lots of you are there. I'm glad to see you. So today, when we get started stamping, we're gonna do two projects with the Peaceful Nativity. This is a beautiful stamp set, and the dies are really fun too. I'm not sure we've ever had a nativity um, or, a, or a set that like this that has dies. So um, I don't know, I really, really like it, and um, I'm gonna use it some more probably. Okay, so today is what, day eight? right? Peaceful Nativity. Yesterday was points out of petals. Yes. Okay. Let's see. I think we'll pause in our regular programming so that I can show you. <laughs> Debbie says, poor Mag and Charlie. You know, they like, they're grouchy old men. My other schnauzers. They are grouchy old men and they like being in their kennel. <laughs> they actually choose to go to their kennel. Well, I'll find them in their kennel during the day. So don't worry. They're fine. All right. I'm going to flip you guys around. Okay. Uh, grouchy old men. They're both almost 11 and they bark at everything and anything and they've taught Pepper their, their bad habits of barking and now when I take her for a walk, she's even barking at people who are walking. Ugh, she's, a, she's a stinker. Okay, so, oh my gosh, it's really hot in here. Let me turn the fan on. Suddenly it's super hot. I don't know what happens to your body when you go Facebook Live but something crazy happens and you get all like, oh. Anyhow, this is the new mini cut and emboss machine. Um, we have been anxiously awaiting this little baby. Um, it is in the annual catalog. There has been lots of delays on this machine. Um, let's look at, see where it is in the catalog right here, page 170. It's $60. It is not orderable yet, unless you're a demonstrator. Um, if you buy the starter kit in December, you can add it to your starter kit. Um, so there's that option. It is a tiny mini version of the big guy that I've been using. It is very light. This one is pretty, pretty stout, pretty heavy, and this one is super light. So it, it's not gonna replace a big machine at all. You can see the size is much smaller but it's gonna serve a different pur purpose in my mind. If you have a smaller space, it'll be great for a smaller space. If you travel to go do crafts, you know, like if you go to retreats or your friend's house or a crop or whatever, this would be a great option. Um, it reminds me of the little cuddle bug I had when I first started a hundred years ago. It's little and it's just so very cute. It It is exactly like the other one, um, it's just tiny. It comes with the plates that you need, the base plate, which is in that one, and then we've got the two clear plates. Look, aren't they beautiful when they're new? <sighs> so nice. And then we've got this, these two different plates. Um, wait a minute, this one doesn't come with the big one, right? Don't we have to add that additionally? I don't remember, or maybe. Use this with 3D embossing folders. Okay, so wait a minute. I'm doing this wrong. One, you'll need to put this, you'll need to put this on. Insert embossing folders, embossing folders. Well, no, 
Oh, okay. So that's interesting. The base plate is much thinner than that one. You know, the big one has this other little skinny plate that goes on there. This one does not. So you just put it in there like that. Oh, God, it's so cute. I like it. Um, there, I believe, will be other plates that you can buy for this. Um, but the fun thing about this little machine is that Stampin' Up! has designed some embossing folders that fit in here. So we already have been ordering these little embossing folders. So it's even got little folders. And if you look in the catalog, it will even tell you that the set, so like maybe you only have the little guy or you want to see if the dies are going to fit in the little guy. There's a little symbol by the dies that tells you that it will fit. So like this set doesn't have that die, I mean that symbol, so that means these you'll have to use on the bigger machine. But these, all the ones with the little mini, you can fit through the, wow, even the sunflower. I'm surprised about that one. Okay, so there's that. Very exciting. This is coming in January, right after the new year. You guys will be able to order it. Um, it is $60, which in January will earn you a celebration product. Um, it's really neat. It's so light. I was also thinking a child. If you have a grandchild or a daughter or son or cousin or whatever, a kid who likes to do paper crafting, this would be adorable for them. I think, you know, when I taught first grade, I would take my big shot to school and they would use it um, for projects. This would be great in the classroom. Um, even those little hands, it would be easier for them to use. I don't know. It's super duper cute. We'll use it today, I think. Yeah, I think we can use it today. Um, so I'll move this one off. Oh no, we're embossing with a big folder, so I will need that one. But it's cute. I love it. I'm so excited that it's here. Okay, so if you are dying to have it, you want it, you need to buy it for Christmas, then just go buy the starter kit and add it to your starter kit um, or even buy it after you've bought your starter kit, whichever you want. It's available right now only to demonstrators, one per person, okay? So you can't order like five of them. All right, so that's that. Um, Let's move on to what we're doing today. I'm reading your comments. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you. I'm glad some, some of you said you just caught me live. Good. Um, we are already to day eight. It's going by so fast. Tomorrow is day nine. Then there will be nothing. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We are driving out to West Texas, taking my daughter for her 18th birthday. She wants to go to Big Bend National Park. So we are taking her and her boyfriend out there. Um, it's going to be a real quick turnaround because it's a pretty long drive. But um, So I will not be live Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, but I will be back Monday. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week, okay? All right. All right. Let's see. Prizes. I have to stop. You guys... I need an office that's big, bigger than this. I am just bursting at the seams here. I got stuff everywhere, boxes all over the floor. Then we got Christmas presents that arrived, so there's boxes all in the hallway. I, I get, I can't function when there's stuff everywhere. I don't know, it stresses me out. Okay, so today, Peaceful Nativity, let's do prizes. Oh, look at that, see what happens? It's a die that fell off of that. Still didn't find the flower die. Didn't find it. I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about it. Did not find it. Hopefully I will find it because I need it. Okay, so two prizes from yesterday. Kathy Hillard and Alyssa Trung. Trunny, I don't know if I if that's a G or Y. I can't read my own writing. But Alyssa, you know if that's you. Um, number 12 and number 22 were the random numbers this time. Funny enough, my question was, what is your favorite Christmas movie? And both of these ladies answered the same thing, Love Actually, which I have only seen once and everybody talks about it. I need to watch that again. I know it's good. I remember it being cute and I just can't even remember what it's about now. But anyway, I thought that was funny because I use a number generator. I just have, I don't pick these and the number generator picks them, but funny that they both picked the same movie. So Kathy, I definitely have your mailing address, Alyssa, message or email me, okay? Um, and Janice McCoy from yesterday, if you're watching, please message me too, okay? 
Alrighty, today, how about two Don't Stop Believing? It's hard to um, read that without singing it, right? <laughs> it's a song title. All right, so those I will give away tomorrow. To enter to win, go over to pinkbuckaroo.com. Scroll down about three-fourths of the way. There's a paragraph there that says, click this link to be entered into a prize drawing, okay? Okay, so that's tomorrow. Um, I have this sitting here. I might as well tell you again about it. Remember, the new All-Star Tutorial Bundle is out, the Artistry Blooms. If you're a su subscriber, I mailed, e emailed them out first thing yesterday morning. If you didn't get it, let me know. Because still I'm having issues with emails going to spam and bouncing and returned and all that. So if you didn't get it and you're a subscriber, let me know. I will be emailing everyone who places a $50 order or more this month. You'll be getting this in the for free in your email. I do it about once a week, so be patient with me. Um, but it's also available in my PDF store. And every uh, tutorial this month features the Artistry Bloom Suite from the annual catalog. And... They're all videos. There's links in here to the video tutorials. And the measurements are both in the Imperial and Metric. All right, now, last thing I'm gonna tell you that if you wanna put an order in between Monday, no, between now and Monday at midnight, I'm gonna send you a project, a make and take from yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, this is what last week's looked like. Look at my cute tags I made, everybody, my little thank you tags. I made little gingerbread houses. Isn't that cute? I love that. And I got a cute email today. Um, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. I saved it. She made the cutest little house, like a 3D house with the gingerbread house. It was adorable. So lots of options there with a coming home. Anyway, this is what your make and take pack will look like when it comes. It's free. I sent it to you for free. Um, if you put in an order using the host code over $35 by Monday at midnight. Okay. Okie dokie, let's get started. I have two cards today. I felt like this was a good card set. No 3D projects. Um, one is artsy and one is more simple. Um, they're both pretty beautiful, I think. Um, of course, we need a night sky, right? I feel like with this set, you got to do a night sky. And of course, if you know me, you know, I'm gonna do the watercolor with salt because it's my favorite technique and I use it, I have to use it all the time because I love it. So that's what we're gonna do. So let me move this one out of the way and let's start with our watercolor background. Now we have watercolor paper. Um, in fact, I have a bunch of it sitting right here. Let me show you, it comes like this in a package like this. The pieces I believe are five by seven and I tape it down to a piece of chipboard because when you get it wet, it's gonna start curling up if you don't do that. So you want to um, tape it down. I use painter's tape or washi tape. Um, painter's tape will hold it down really, really well. Occasionally painter's tape will tear it. Um, so you gotta be careful when you take it off, okay? Okay, let me get all of my stuff out. We need the spritzer and that, that, we've got that. The salt, where's the salt? Oh, it's on the wrong tray. So the salt that I'm using is just coarse kosher salt. You can use any salt you want. Um, if you use a small table salt, you get a totally different look. Um, it's fun to play around. I even have some decorating salt. I think that's what it's called, the big kind of chunks of salt <laughs> that you sprinkle on top of a dessert. Is that what it's called? I can't remember. Anyway, um, I have some of that. I wonder what that would look like too. That would probably leave big, like, you know, I don't know, big textures. Okay, so I'm gonna use Knight of Navy and you can squeeze your pad like this um, so that you get ink on the inside of your ink pad. Some people don't like that and that's okay. If you don't like doing that, just get a clear block and you, you know stamp it on there so that you have like a little palette of ink. Now I've got my spritzer full of water and to get this nice and wet, I'm gonna really spray it. I want it really, really juicy because I'm just gonna drop this color in. I've got a water painter. Oh, look at that, it is totally empty. Well, darn. Okay, you, do you think I can pour? water from here into here. Okay, I'm not even going to show you. I'm going to do it off screen. 
I'm going to make a mess on the floor, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. Okay, I think I have enough. Gosh, I didn't even have very much in my spritzer either. Okay, we better work fast. All right, so by the way, these screw in backwards. If you have the new water painters and you can't get it to open, go backwards. I don't know why it's like that. Um, okay, so, you know, squeeze it to get your water and then just come and start dropping ink into the water that's already there. And I just kind of like to spread it around. And the water or the color will kind of separate. You'll even see some purples and some lighter blues. And you can take it and kind of move it around like this. You're gonna get all kinds of different textures um, if you let the water take the ink and move it around for you. So I'm just gonna drop, drop, drop. I really should have more water than this, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna do it. It's gonna be okay. Sometimes I even like to take it and just go like this. Flick off the rest on here. And then just kind of, you know, it's just like, it's like preschool painting. <laughs> and then until, when you have, when you think it's good and messy enough and, you know, we've got some variation, you don't want it to all be the same, take your salt and sprinkle it. Okay? As little or as much as you would like. Now, let me move all of this so that we don't get it all over everything. This is going to take a while to dry. Um, depending on your climate, it's going to take a while. I set mine outside um, in the sun, and it can take a good 15, 20 minutes to completely dry. You can use a heat tool to dry it, but you get a different look. If you let it dry by itself, you get a completely different look um, if you hit it with a heat tool than if you let it dry by itself. Can you see how some of the purples have separated? That color um, obviously has some purples in it. The blue has some purples in it and it's just spread out and you've got all kinds of different shades of blue. All right, so that we don't have to wait 15 or 20 minutes. I did one yesterday. Look at it, isn't that cool? Very cool. Okay, let me get a piece of paper. Well, let's see, can I scrap, scrape it off onto this? You're just gonna take that salt and rub it off. And there you have it. So then you wanna just carefully peel the paper. And you know, the reason I keep, I don't cut my, my watercolor sheet down until afterwards because if I cut it exactly the right size, I might tear it with my tape and have to start all over. If I tore it with my tape here, I have room to, you know, room for air basically. I have room to cut off any tears or whatever. All right, so we're gonna cut it down to four by six. It is a fun technique. I really like it. I, it's, <laughs> I do it all the time. I use this technique all the time. And another thing you can do is kind of build your color. So you do it and you let it dry and then you do it again and you let it dry and you do it again and the color will get deeper and richer each time you do it. Um, it's fun, it's really fun. All right, so I cut it down five by four and let me get my heat tool. We're gonna stamp that little star up there in the top of the sky the one lone star, and I didn't put my sticker on it, so hopefully I do not get it crooked, which is a, a really good possibility. The one star, the guiding light, do it right there. And then, let's see, a little gold embossing powder. There we go, okay, now, we're gonna hit it with a heat tool so it'll be nice and shiny. Thanks, Michelle. I think my star's relatively straight. I need to put that sticker on it so that I can, uh, so that I can uh, <laughs> make sure it's straight every time. All right, so I used Versamark ink, gold embossing powder, and the heat tool. And then look, now it's shiny. There are a couple of star um, stamps in this set. There's two, so you could do, you know, a night sky. 
Okay, so I've got a white card base. So let's go ahead and put that down. I am gonna use, if I can find one that's not empty, Stampin' Seal Plus, because the watercolor paper is really thick and I notice it's, it's pulling up on my other card. So I'm gonna be quite generous with my Stampin' Seal Plus. Get it to stick down nicely. Okay, oh, look at that. I didn't even score my card. It's a little bit off. All right, there we go. Okay, now I have a piece of a crumb cake. Just, you know, I don't know. I wrote the, the measurements, by the way, all of this is over my blog. I believe this is two inches by four. And I'm just gonna kind of tear the edge like that. Let's see, I'm gonna make that a little bit torn also like that. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of the ground. I'm gonna take my Stampin' Sponge. Hey, Cindy. And some crumb cake. I'm gonna ink the edges all over. And we're gonna stamp the sentiment here. For unto us a child is born. I was in church on Sunday and I had an idea for an advent card. I'm hopefully gonna have time to make it before, <laughs> before it's too late. I was gonna use this set and the candle set. All right, early espresso. And let's see, we're gonna use Stamp and Seal Plus again because that's a pretty rough texture. And we'll go right along the bottom. Okay, now let's do our stamping. We're gonna stamp the manger. No, the not the manger. The manger is the little thing that Jesus was in. This is the, the barn. What am I thinking of? The stable, hello, the stable. Okay, I'm gonna stamp it in early espresso. Ink on early espresso cardstock. And I'm going to stamp Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus in memento black on whisper white. And I'm gonna color them before we cut them out. This is making me nervous, let me move this. You know, if you leave an open ink pad on your table, chances are you're gonna make a mess. Something bad's gonna happen. All right, I have chosen Seaside Spray, although that looks like Balmy Blue, whatever, it doesn't matter, Seaside Spray or Balmy Blue. And I'm gonna color Mary's little um, gown or robe, whatever it is she's wearing, in um, light. Now, she's got like um, a veil, and I'm gonna leave that white. Okay, I'm gonna leave that white. Now I'm gonna take my dark and I'm gonna kind of go over all of those little scratch marks there. Those are kind of indications where I wanna add some shading. And then I'm gonna go back with the light, blend it all in, all right? Okay, now over to Joseph. We're gonna do him in crumb cake, his robe. You know, that doesn't look very practical for traveling. I'm not sure. I feel bad. <laughs> Mary and Joseph had a hard time. Can't imagine what they went through. I don't know. I don't know what would be comfortable in those conditions. All right, let's see. Same deal here. I'm going to add some dark crumb cake do all over. You know, while I've got this out, let's do his hair. I'm going to do his hair in dark. I'm going to do her hair in dark. Let's take this back. The light. Ooh, I don't like that squeak. Did I get? Nope, I forgot bomb. I mean, um, petal pink. I'll have to grab that. All right. Now I've got so saffron for the hay in the manger. Oh, I was gonna do, he's swaddled. 
Let's do him in blue as well. His little swaddle, swaddling clothes. Okay. And, you know, I was going to use soft, I mean, yeah, soft suede for the rest of this, but we'll just use dark crumb cake. Um, and then really carefully down that staff that he's got in his hand. Okay, but I have to grab the petal pink. We've got an arm and a face and a little baby's face, Mary's face and her hands. And there we have it. So I'm gonna leave her, her head covering or veil, I'm gonna leave it white, all right? Okay, shall we break in the mini cut and emboss machine? Now, one thing that the mini will not let you do is cut a bunch of things at once. <laughs> so if you're gonna need to cut a bunch of things at once, you are probably going to need to use the big guy. And I may not be able to, well, the stable can go sideways. All right, so we're gonna put this here like that. All right, first, first cut. Yay, I think it's pretty awesome that baby Jesus was the first one to go through, don't you? All right, now we will get this, and I don't think that this is gonna go in. Oh yeah, I will. All right, all right, I was wrong. I don't know, is that gonna fit in there? Is that gonna go all the way through? Yeah, I think it is. All right, let's line it up. And put that one there as well. I can't really see what I'm doing. This is really slipping and sliding around. I may need to add a little piece of post-it. Hold on, oh look, my post-it tape is right here. Um, Jessica, it depends on which dies. She says, how many pieces of cardstock do you cut through on the big machine? Typically I can get two sheets. You know, you're talking about like, like if I'm cutting a bunch of things, can I double up? And I can typically get two sheets on most things. There are dies that will not cut through two pieces, like the stitched rectangles. They will not do it. They will not do it. Um, and then sometimes anything that's intricate that has cutting in the middle, um, like this guy right here, probably wouldn't cut through, like this one wouldn't cut through two, two pieces. That's a neat die cut. But this one most likely would. You just kind of have to play with it and see. Um, I'm pretty hard on my die cut machines, as you could probably imagine. Um, and they're pretty strong. They're pretty strong machines. I can usually get them to handle quite a bit. But that uh, those stitched rectangles, for whatever reason, will not cut through to um, layers. The stitched scallop rectangles, I can get those most of the time to cut through, but every now and then the scallops kind of catch and they don't cut all the way through the second layer. Okay, so I'm gonna adhere that, nope, yes, that's right. Suddenly I oh, thought it was backwards, but no. That one's gonna go flat. This one, we're gonna use many dimensionals. I like these dies too, Kimberly. They are cute. And this little stable you could use for other things too, I would, I would think. And the palm trees, there's two little palm trees in here as well. All right, I'm gonna snip that off because that's a little bit too wide for that mini. All right, so I'm gonna layer that on top of the first one. Okay, now before we put Mary and Joseph on there, I didn't like how it left that white edge around it. Usually it doesn't bother me, but in this situation, 
I, th I felt like because we were putting it on a dark, dark background, it made it kind of obvious. So I'm gonna go around the edge with that same sponge to helpful, help it blend into that sand color background. See, it kind of disappears when you do that. Okay, so now we'll need a couple more dimensionals and then we are done. This is a beautiful card. All right, there we go. Very pretty. It's a special card. I like it. I love this set. This is one I will definitely keep. All right, what do you guys think? Yes? That um, watercolor background is fun. I hope that you guys will give it a try. If you haven't given it a try yet, it is, it is a lot of fun. Okay, let me clean up and I will grab the other tray and we will make the second card. Now the second card, I decided to keep it a little, um, a little more simple without the coloring. So, as you can see, I use the same stamp, but I just stamped it tone on tone, okay? And I wanna show you something I saw on Instagram last week that has changed how I feel about cutting around the words. I love the way it looks, but I usually don't like how mine look. Well, I've got a tip for you, and I'll show you. But let's put the card together first, okay? I've got a Knight of Navy card base. I'm gonna use that gold hoop in a second. We need to emboss with the Dainty Diamonds embossing folder. I believe that's what it's called, right? The Dainty Diamonds. Let me move this. Little baby. Sorry, you're too little for the embossing folder. And let's open this guy up. All right, now I can't remember if I need the adapter for this one. Let me guess, it feels thick. I think we're gonna need the adapter. Let's try it. You know, it's always kind of a, a crap shoot for me, honestly. I have to test it and see. I usually don't know right off the top of my head. Yep, okay. The Dainty Diamonds need that, um, that plate number, why am I, <laughs> that was weird. Um, number four. So you remove the clear plates. You remove plate number one, no, number two. You're just gonna use one and four for the 3D embossing folders. All right, so that's a piece of Whisper White that's five by four and a fourth. And then I'm gonna go back through with just a piece of Did I take that circle punch? I did. Um, we're gonna need the circle punch. But you know what? I might have broken my circle punch earlier today. We'll have to see. Knight of Navy, that's what I was gonna say. All right, while we're here, I might as well cut everything out, huh? I should have planned ahead. All right, let's put the dainty diamonds back over here. We've gotta put back on plate number two. And we're gonna cut out the two um, nope, just one, one palm tree. Okay, I did cut out two the first, when I first designed this card, but then I realized um, that was too much. Just one, just need one. All right, let's stamp this also. And is it dirty? It is. Oh, please. I need to get a chamois that I keep over here. So I always have to run back over there to get my chamois. All right, these guys are gonna be crumb cake on crumb cake. We'll cut them out. And then I'm gonna have to see if my circle punch is working. We may have to use a circle die. I jammed it because I was trying to punch through too many layers of cardstock. That, you know, I've only broken a a die cut machine once, but I have broken punches many times because I try to push them further than they should go. So let me see, let me grab it and see. It's a two and a fourth, I believe. It seems like it's working. I should try it on scrap paper first. 
Let's see, in my recycled bin, do I have scrap paper? Yep, here's from yesterday. Let's see. Yeah, oh, I broke it. I'm gonna have to, huh, well, okay, okay, hold on. I didn't break it. I just needed to use a little elbow grease. Okay, fingers crossed. This is the right size, right? Let's make sure. Yes, okay. Fingers crossed, hold your breath. <gasps> Yay! Ah, see, I was wrong. I didn't break it. Oh, darn it. I needed to cut out the star too. Usually I have all that stuff cut out ahead of time. But you know what? That's a perfect job for the baby. Yes, we'll put the, the star on the little baby die cut machine. <laughs> it feels so funny because it's little. It's just so funny. Okay, when you're used to using the big one, it feels so odd. All right, now let's put all of this together. All right, I have a Knight of Navy card base. And we need adhesive. I guess I'll use the seal again. Seal plus again. And this is Seaside Spray. I love Seaside Spray with Knight of Navy. Beautiful. And then here's our embossed piece. Um, I'm gonna I am gonna actually adhere it with the raised side down. I like how it looks um, debossed, which means the pushed out shapes are facing down. Okay, so we'll put that there. And then we will take our circle and put it right in the center. And I think. I'm going to take just a little bit of, look, is that not disgusting? You guys see, I'm such a mess. I need to clean out my adhesive. All right, is it clogged? Uh, okay, plan B. Glue dots. <laughs> plan B. We're going to get some glue dots. And you can kind of roll those glue dots so that they fit behind like that and I will hide it down here at the bottom like that look at that that's a perfect fit that little two and a fourth inch circle just barely makes a little mat around it all right now we're gonna need our palm tree and I am gonna use a glue dot for that. And we'll put that kind of out like that. And dimensionals. Let's put one on that right there. Double duty. And put our little nativity scene there. Okay, now Melody Hyde is a Stampin' Up! She's the con lead concept artist at Stampin' Up. She has a great Instagram account, Ham and Penny. She also runs the Instagram account, Stamping Through the Catalog, with some of the other concept artists. She's awesome. So I watched her the other day do a fussy cutting around the word. Let me see. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. Okay. And I'm going to stamp this in Early Espresso on Whisper White. And I'm gonna pray that I don't smear it. And she said, when you're gonna do this, take a pencil and just go lightly around the word. That way, when you're cutting, you have a line guiding you. And I kind of thought, okay, I don't really see how that would make a difference. But you guys, it totally does. All right, so now, you're not really just kind of flying by the seat of your pants. You are following a line. And when I did it, I was so excited by the result. One thing you want to remember is to try to keep, you know, a continual cut. Keep, keep going up in the middle of your scissors. Turning your paper with your left hand 
and just turn, 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 turn. Now I'm trying to stay on the inside of the pencil line, but if you still have a little bit of pencil line left, you can erase it. And look, it works, right? Isn't that better? That is way better than if I had just tried to wing it. You guys need to try it. You need to try it. All right, so remember I cut out that star. Here it is. <laughs> I didn't know where it went. Um, mini dimensional. You guys got to try it. Try it. I'm telling you, huge difference. Because I have tried to cut out the words before and mm, didn't like it a whole lot. I think I've only done it maybe like left it once or twice. Usually I throw it away because it looks bad. All right. So we'll put that right there in the middle, actually a little bit lower. Hello, don't cover up baby Jesus. What was I thinking? There we go. Now, I'm gonna use a different gold thread today. It's not the gold uh, cord. It is um, the gold thread that is the Indie Forever Greenery Ribbon and Trim Pack. It's very light and like thread. Yesterday, the one we used was cording, so it was stiff. This one is like thread, and I don't like how that's frayed. Okay, start over. For some reason, that end was frayed. I don't know why. Let's do that again. Some of you aren't hearing me or seeing me. What's happening? Mine is not frozen. Are the Facebook gremlins at work today? Don't delete my video, Facebook. We love you. Sorry, we're not talking bad about you. They'll delete it if they don't like us. All right. Where did I put this before? Just down here. And done. That needs to be trimmed a little bit. Oh, oh my gosh. Try that again. Trim. Trim. Y'all are good? Okay, good. All right, there you have it. I don't I want this hanging down like that. Isn't that beautiful? All right, I forgot I'm zoomed in. Let me zoom out again. There we go. All right, you guys, that's it for today. No disasters today. We had kind of two disasters in a row yesterday with the way the dogs behaved and then the day before. Today, today I think we, we did okay. Tomorrow, I'll be back at two o'clock central. Um, and tomorrow we're using the gift wrap set. Is that what it's called? Gift wrap. Um, don't forget to go over to pinkbuckaroo.com. Oh, I forgot to put, I forgot. You guys on a dark card base, you want to put a piece of whisper white on the inside. I didn't do it on the original, but you want to put a piece of whisper white on the inside so that you can write your message. Four by five and a fourth. All right, hop over, pinkbuckaroo.com. I'll update the video here with a link. You can go over there and find the measurements, the link for the um, prize. There's a link at the bottom for the new all-star tutorial as well as the calendar, um, calendar class. All right, you guys, have a great afternoon and I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place, two o'clock central. Bye, everybody.